Thank you, folks. Please welcome back the director, Iran Kularin. I want to give a, a huge shout out to the producers of the film, Dory Media, and Karen Michael is one of the producers here with us tonight as well. I'm letting everybody catch their breath. I'm letting everybody catch their breath. Um, thank you, thank you so much for a beautiful film. The film, of course, is is based on uh, Said Kashua's book, um, and and Said often writes a lot about his world and who he is, and a lot of this, I think, is based on him. How did you approach this? Where did you come from? Um, well, <coughs> Said. Uh, uh, up and Karen approached me with uh, the book, offering me to do. Side offered me to do this adaptation. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'll try. Anyway, I was approached by Syed Kashua, who wrote the book of around seven years ago, um, and. And it was uh, not a, uh, you know, uh, how do you say, uh, expected offer. I mean, I, I would, I'm not the, the natural choice, let's say. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, uh, I said it before, you know, at the time it sounded like an invitation for a public suicide, you know. It was but... Uh, you know, I thought, you know, there's an invitation. Someone, oh, it's like someone opening his house for you, inviting you in. So there's always the specific case, you know, there's always the specific encounter which you have to take in mind. So I, I thought two things. I thought if someone really invites me and he said, you know, he generally said, take it and, you know, do whatever you want with it. I have written the book. I, s uh, I also recommend any of you to read the book. You know, uh, it's a very good book. But um, um, I, I, I told myself two things. First of all, I can do whatever I want. I don't need to. If I come in to, if I come in, I cannot be uh, cautious. You know, I cannot. You cannot make this adaptation and be cautious. I need to to be free there, whatever the cost of it. And I thought I can change anything except for the spirit of the book as I see it. You know, I have to be loyal for the spirit, but I don't need to be loyal to anything else but, you know, the spirit. Because I think sometimes you are so much accurate and faithful with to a lot of details, but you miss the point and you can miss all the points and be faithful for the for the thing you know so for me it was more important to be faithful for the thing as i saw it um that was my first uh, you know uh, decision with myself the second decision was that i will put the soldier there because uh, the book did not have any interaction with uh, the soldier and um, I, I had two decisions, that the soldier would be as close as I can to, m to me, the way I was in the army, and that the soldier must shoot. Like, at the end of the day, you know, this circle, this vortex of closures have to end with a with a bullet, because that's that's the way things are. So this was my two. Uh, uh, but still, I, I found it very hard to adapt. I, I, it took me years, and kind of I was rewriting and rewriting the script, and I didn't find a way. And then one day, one day I was going to teach in Zer Jerusalem, and I went on this shared cab, shared taxi ride. And it was early morning, and you know, on those taxi, shared taxi, there are everyone. There are like, uh, you know, Jews, Palestinians, uh, Filipinos, whoever goes to it's, work. It's kind of like the cab we saw there. Yeah. And, and pass the money. Yeah. And then, and then I looked on when they pass the money because they have this habit of passing the money from one. And I looked at it and I thought to myself, this is so beautiful how people can 
with their trust, <laughs> with their money, and everybody gives a, a stranger his money, and the, you know the stranger passes it on. And I thought, what a beautiful side, s small side of humanity. And and then I thought, this is how somewhat in something in the film should work. It would be like riding in circles, going nowhere, but still some kind of trust or humanity that builds within it. So you do a you do a great job. Um, first of all, I think that you are a good choice for this film, from my perspective, knowing your Thank past you. films, because I think you have always captured the absurdity of reality in a <laughs> certain way, and have approached life, and, and in every shot, you could see a little bit of absurdity. And I think <laughs> nothing is more absurd, first of all, than uh, Palestinian village life and uh, and specifically the reality they're in in this film. Yeah, I mean, everything is absurd. I don't know, I don't... I, I, I was just walking to the screening here, for example, just an, an hour before, just walked in, and then I was passing this big shop and there were like five cops outside and there was one girl handcuffed and uh, uh, the one of the policemen was searching her hair and people were looking at it and it was so cruel and and absurd but people it, it was like i was looking at it and it, this happens in reality now you know <laughs> in front of my eyes and it's like <coughs> and it's very the way the way the world react to this is very mundane you know we're walking around this but there's there's like five cop and one is searching a hair for a little girl which is handcuffed what's going on so uh, so you know I, I i don't think i i you know i invent this absurdity just all over the place you know <laughs> it's, it's you, you might pay more attention to it and just bring <laughs> it up in certain ways. Um, but it, but it's very, I think also, when I was watching this film, um, seeing it in a post, well, I don't know if we're in a post-pandemic state yet, but yeah. seeing it <laughs> since the pandemic started, of course, and I know you started work on this before the pandemic, but but it also, th this this kind of, that the world of, first of all, the isolation, the lockdown, and and it and then the breakdown of the systems and that's what I feel <laughs> one of the things that came out of this pandemic is all these systems broke down these yeah, systems that worked <laughs> that we thought were so beautiful and perfect. Um, I, I I don't know. I had li there was something that uh, when the pandemic comes it came it was really strange. For example, I I wanted to have a scene for the young bride all the time and I didn't find it and then I, we spoke together and told her maybe she's obsessed about cleaning and then I told her write write a monologue for yourself about cleaning you know and she wrote this monologue and I said and and it's a scene that was not like uh, you know needed in the film in a way dramatically it was always going in inside uh, in and out of the cuts, you know, one scene, one out, because every time people would say, it's a nice scene, but we're not un we don't really understand it, or why is she, and then the pandemic came, it was, and then everybody understood, and it was this thing with the, you know, like, purify, like a very old thing, like purify your body, purify your, it's like Greek tragedy, you know, there's, a, there's something going on which is wrong, and people start to, to think that, their bodies are <laughs> there's some filth inside of them or something that's that's is internal and will never uh, go away <laughs> I, I think in the borat movie he was also killing covid that way too and <laughs> walking around <laughs> killing covid <laughs> kill kill um, i haven't seen i'm sorry <laughs> we'll, we'll watch it later um the, the first the, of all was there was a like a covid film or like it was a COVID film, yeah. Oh, it was people COVID. are fast. Nah. No, you're, you're not the only one who I'm was starting the it like seven years before the COVID, <laughs> finishing it like. A <laughs> um, okay. Leave it to Am Amazon Studios. Uh, um, yeah. But okay, another important <laughs> element here is um, Arabic. The film is 95, if not 99, percent in Arabic. Yeah. Um, how how was they that? They so how cannot that uh, disqualify this time from the Oscar. It's like 90. Arabic, Arabic, Arabic is allowed? Arabic's Arabic, Arabic is Wait. foreign, you know? Everything except America is foreign, <laughs> no? English and America, the rest is foreign, so Arabic is foreign. 
Um, <laughs> very interesting. Of course, uh, the band's visit was uh, disqualified from the Oscars because it had too much English in it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but how was your work in Arabic? Are you fluent in Arabic? Yeah, I speak Arabic. I don't speak it too... Uh, well, I mean, I speak well, and of course, everything that was in the script, I understand. You know, I was able... And um, I like the language very much, but, you know, sometimes working... I have the feeling that I preferred, because sometimes when you know the, like, when you're too fluent, like, language can, language can, mis text can mystify, can obscure the, the truth sometimes. And sometimes you can, uh, uh, I like to direct in foreign language, I don't know. There's something that I can look deeper into, to the being of the actor, rather than, you know, the the way he speaks okay but uh, yeah I do speak <laughs> um, and the, the I'll, I'll just ask one more and then I'll give uh, an opportunity for the audience to ask some questions the opening slide this takes place um, a moment before peace <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was uh, I, I got attacked like you know <laughs> this film as you can imagine this you know at least in Israel was this controversy. And I was, and there was this guy, some guy who was the head of a fund, and he was I, all over the Facebook, like, and then wrote me uh, like a thousand times before seeing the, even the film, you know? He was completely constantly saying, I haven't seen the film. But if there's nothing in the beginning that says that this is imaginary, then it's, uh, you know, it's fraud and blah, blah, and, you know, all those kind of, I don't know, people are strange. <laughs> And uh, and you know, then I wrote back. You know, uh, he said like it should, it has to read before. This is based on an imaginary. Uh, <laughs> so I wrote back. You know, uh, the, uh, we didn't write it like that. But you know, the opening caption is like a moment before the piece. And you, can you imagine something more fictional <laughs> than that? You know, <laughs> like a moment that for sure will never happen. Uh, so uh, yeah, you know. Um, People are uh, people. Kind of need always the the context for something. Yet, yet you ended at this moment where anything can happen. This the, the doors are open. Um, uh, could you share a little bit about that last shot? Uh, oh, that's. Um, I'll tell a couple of things. I've, I hope the first one will not get me into too much trouble. But it's not about like comparing anything or all this kind of stuff. I'm just saying my own experience. There was something when the I read this story about this lockdown that has no meaning, and then it ends one day. I recalled uh, my my grandmother's story from World War Two, and there was a story that she always told about how the end of the war they were like in uh, icy woods somewhere after the death march and and she she said you know we woke up some d one day and the sound was different and we crawled out of our little you know places where and there was no one there you know <laughs> just the guards everyone disappeared and of course you know they were like what do we do now do, do we can we go out? Can, can we not go? I mean, l l people have been caged, f you know, for for so long, and and then like one day it's gone. But what what do you do with that? You know, uh, so uh, and this is actually an inside novel. You know, uh, it's there is another part that we shot, but that. At the end, it's like part of the like territory uh, exchange between uh, Palestinian territories and Israel. But and I shot it like I shot this ending. But when I watched it, I felt that oh, uh, standing in front of this gate, it's like this Kafkaesque thought that there is a gate that is always your gate and you will never pass through this gate and I felt that the film and kind of reached the height of the thought you know that I felt was the strongest point and I felt that this is where it ends where people are basically presenting themselves like we are here and but 
reality or you know the existence doesn't is indifferent for them about them is indifferent regarding them a good choice <laughs> folks i would love to give an opportunity for a couple questions from the audience if uh, anyone has i'll start over here uh thank you i think that you tried to present a slice of life which is complex and confusing can you hear me because i don't yes. i can okay. hear you well uh I admire two parts of the film because I thought that they were very uh, honest. You did mention that the Arab was very successful at an Israeli company and he was doing very well and he was being treated well. You had the courage of saying that those Arab thugs were um, terrorizing their own Arab people. Uh, you, sh you showed the fact that, that love is complex. People have mistresses, people fall in love, out of love, etc. But I felt that there was one major uh, fault in the film. You never explained or presented to the audience why that roadblock occurred. There may have been very good reason in omitting that reason, you weigh the film against the Israelis. The implication is, look at how poorly they are treating this Arab village. Well, uh, first of all, I do agree. They are poorly treating this Arab village, very poorly. And uh, yes, it has no reason. Never in life when one power is blocking other minority, there's never a reason to that. There's never an acceptable reason to doing that. Same way as there's never acceptable reason for a cop be searching a girl's hair on the street. I don't fucking care what she did. I don't care. It's not complex. Injustice is not a complex, th in a complex thing. Injustice is very simple, and we have the ability as human beings to see it. It presents itself, and there is no reason for injustice. You get really beautiful performances out of your cast. I was wondering if you could share anything about the process of casting and working with Alex Bakri. Um, yes, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, the process of casting was, uh, I first met uh, Juna. I'm actually, uh, I have a very good casting director, which I did all my previous film, and very great casting director. And I was, I was thinking I'm gonna work with her on this film. And we heard about Juna Suleiman, and we approached Juna, the, she's the actress, as to help us to find actors. And I went to meet her in Jerusalem, and, and in Haifa, I'm sorry. And uh, Juna, quite frankly, kind of told me in this, she told me like, listen, I've, did some, I've done some films. What is this, you know, part of, you know, this is a film about Palestinian, I am Palestinian and you approach me in order to help you and your friend casting director as good as she is, but... And I heard her and I thought, okay, she's right, you know, this, this film has a different destiny. So I called my friend Dorit and said, listen, I'm gonna work with Juna because, you know, I think she, she's the right person and she has a point and of course, Dorit and I are, you know, very friendly and she said you know I understand you know go your go your way and the first thing Juna said was uh, she said okay you have to get Alex Bakri to, to, to play uh, Sami so I didn't know Alex Bakri never so I said who's Alex Bakri and she said uh, well he's my ex-boyfriend <laughs> 
and he's just like that. <laughs> you have to. And, and then I met Alex, and I could see all the things she said, you know, his gentle reservedness and, uh, and his observi observing character. And I really liked it. And uh, like him, <laughs> sorry. And uh, then we were starting to look for his uh, partner, and really, we've seen marvelous actresses, and they, but nothing really worked. And then, like on the, the, the really the last day of auditions, Jonas told me, you know, I will do it better than all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, there's the seat. Let's <laughs> let's see you act. And she sat next to Alex. And it was obvious that you could see a couple, you know. You could see, uh, you you could see a couple. You can see their history. You could see the love. You could see the broken love. You could see that they like each other, but it's heavy already. Yeah. And it was obvious that you know these um, uh, sh they were the the couple. And then slowly it started to we started to build the circles around them. And uh, so Alex is actually a video editor. He lives uh, now in uh, Germany. Uh, he helped me to edit some scenes uh, on the film. We were really, I mean, this film was so, such a lovely bubble of love that, that I, I'm sure it's on the screen between everyone there. So Alex was sleeping at my house editing in the night some scenes and you know, Juna was his ex-girlfriend uh, and the casting director, and I was talking uh, with her about the script, and I, it was really a speci very special production. And, and it was clear to me with the, uh, the little controversy in Cannes that um, where, where the Palestinian actors yeah. were making a statement that they loved the film and loved working with you and we're, we're proud of all of that, but, um, but we're making a statement as far as yeah, using the CAN platform. I mean, f first of all, you know, uh, the, the film was accepted to CAN. Uh, nobody remembers that anymore, but, but there was this really crazy operation, like th there was this war like uh, at that time. I don't know what was the name of that war. It was. But it was really one of the craziest events of, of last year's. Palestinian uh, society in Israel was in a bad, bad place. And then th we come th there comes an uh, invitation from Cannes. And of course, it's, it's a split feeling for them. It's a split situation. And uh, from the beginning, I thought, you know, this movie will be done in um, equality and respect in the sense that I told them, you know, if you want to come with us, you know, with me, with the film to Canyon, say whatever you want, do your uh, statement there, I'll be happy. And But if you don't feel comfortable and you want me to take your statement there and back you, I will back you, you know, write your thing. And I, I and it was very, for me, a beautiful uh, act of solidarity as they back the film saying, we like the film. We are happy for it to be in Cannes, but we have a political problem which we need to present. They made a very peaceful act, you know, it's a very decent and dignified act. And I, and I on the other hand, supported them. I published, you know, the statement. I was backing them, you know, on all the questions. And that's the way this film has, has been seen. Uh, we're accepting. There's always different voices. There's uh, just accepting everyone, backing each other, and uh, I'm, I'm for me, I'm, I'm very proud that you know this faith thing continues. And it's a great sign that art actually goes it supersedes politics, and I uh, and I think I think it's a beautiful example of that. Iran, I want to thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.